Hi, Charlie Davis here. I'm going to show you how to transfer a sketch of a kitten onto watercolor paper. This is something I'm going to be providing you uh, with a link to download and you just need to print it out. It's set for a five by seven sheet of watercolor paper and that Is like this. This is a five by seven sheet, which I have down here. And again, the se several ways you can do it. Some people like to use a grid method. I do either freehand draw or sketch, uh, either on paper using Photoshop or even my phone. And that's what this sketch is right here. It's something I did on my phone. And so, after you print out your sketch and I recommend maybe um, trimming off the top at least and you can leave the sides you don't have to uh, worry about um, getting it down to 100% uh, cut. You'll notice I have a, a border on the printout and that and that lines up perfectly with a 5 by 7 sheet of watercolor paper that you trim down from whatever size you have and this is cold press 140 pound and what you do is uh, tape it and you can then take carbon paper if you have any of that lying around uh, something i have from when <laughs> believe it or not when i was a kid i still kick this around and still use it on occasion uh, that was something my mom had me recycle repurpose and but she also showed me a technique where you can take a piece of paper it could be as big as the sheet that you have or i use these because it's a little easier to move around and i can see them a little better and these this is nothing more than a piece of paper take a soft pencil this here is a 3b and you just color in the back as much as you can, as dark as you can, and that causes it to, uh, when you press on it from the other side, I'll show you in a second, that allows the graphite to transfer over, which you can also purchase graphite paper. I'll have a link to that as well. And all that does is, you know, cuts the step of where you have to, you know, take your pencil and, you know, darken the back. It could work either way. I like doing this because then, you know, you don't have to buy anything. And so what you do at that point is with it taped down, you're going to put the graphite paper in between the drawing and the watercolor paper just underneath. And then you are basically going to draw over, pressing down a little hard to get a dark shape, uh, tr dark transfer, I should say, down below on your watercolor paper. And I like to work very realistically, so you'll notice that my sketches are very detailed along with the transfer. When I transfer it onto the paper, it's very detailed as well. And that's just the way I like to work. So after you've done a little bit, you'll notice you've got the, you can lift it up. That's the reason you tape it. You can lift it up to check where you need to be next. You just draw sketch rather or trace, which I have no problem doing. It's just another tool in the artist handbook or artist arsenal of tools the masters used to trace so don't let people tell you otherwise um, so once you get that you look realize you need to do it around you know move it around as you go down you'll have your sketch underneath another way of doing it is with the um, back of when you print it out, you can actually 
leave like I have here. You see I left the top available so that I can tape it to the paper. And before you do that, you take the back of it and you shade just like you did on the short pieces of paper or the, whatever paper you use or graphite paper. Instead of doing that, this is you know, another technique my mom showed me to learn how to draw and to get the sketches down just right. So this allows you to, to basically, yeah, I'm going to turn the light board on so you can see it. That's another way, but you can see that I've darkened in the back basically on the exact uh, tracing or a sketch and I noticed I missed a spot over here so you just take your pencil and you darken around the outline of the printout so what you then do is you take that sheet of five by seven Line it up as best you can, and you're going to then take the tape and fold it over. I'm going to turn that off so this is basically what you see. So you have the sketch on top of your watercolor paper. Slight drawback to this format of transferring is. Um, when you press down, it's going to leave some graphite. When you press down, it's going to leave a little bit of graphite. You can see it right here already. It's just transferring. And that's going to happen with the other technique with the little sheet. So here, you don't have to worry about the graphite shifting and moving. And you just press down, trace. and put in as much detail as you want onto the watercolor paper. And you can lift up and see your progress. This uh, is a 0.5, I would probably use a 0.7, but I don't know where that went on my paper, so the more I press down, the easier it's gonna break. <laughs> Hazards, I guess, of the trade. I also would recommend maybe using a pen to push down, because then you can actually, on this method at least, if you use a pen, you get a little more pressure and you can see exactly where you've already traced over. I'll show that in a second. So it gives you a, an area to focus on. <clears throat> so there you go. That's one other method to do it and using the graphite paper transfer slash tracing method. Again, go over it as much as you, much detail as you want. My style, again, as I said earlier, was very realistic. I like to have a lot of detail in my sketches underneath my watercolor. And, you know, you can just imply as well and then fill it in as you feel you need to. Constantly checking. If you think you need to go a little darker, then press down a little harder. And this one here, I noticed I do need to go a little darker. But don't press too hard that you actually put an imprint onto your paper. And then see here, you've got a little bit of the, because of the way my hand's pressing on the paper, I'm using a kneaded eraser. You can 
pull off that extra graphite. Okay, that's another way of doing the transfer. And here, I also use a light board, which is this here. Turn it on. Let me lift this up. You do the opposite. You're gonna tape your five by seven, in this case, sheet of paper on top of the sketch. So again, I have a tape so I can flip it up if I need to see a little more of the detail. This here, I'm gonna use my mechanical pencil without an issue because I'm gonna just go lightly over the areas that I can see below. from the sketch. And I can see that I had from when I had the... from the graphite paper, some of the graphite smudged on top. Again, that's one of the drawbacks for using the graphite on top, which is why I tend to use the light board. You get less stray marks. And if I need to see a little bit more of the detail, you know, like here. And you can just lift it up. And just the nature of how I sketch, it's okay for me to, you know, change it as I go. Don't have to follow the sketch completely. A lot of it's good to have impl implying the fur. And you're gonna have the sketch to look at anyway in your reference photo so it's up to you how much detail you want to put in on the sketch that's going on to your watercolor paper so you just do that refine it as much as you want and there we go that's the one i'm gonna work on with the light board off i tend to work with a piece of paper underneath it so that um, I don't get any watercolor onto my light board. That's what this hair is. And I also use small pieces that I've, I've have kicking around of my watercolor paper for taking off some of the extra water or extra paint. Depends on what process I'm in working in at that point. And uh, so that's it. That's how you go from getting a sketch that's been printed and transfer it onto your watercolor paper. And if you don't have a light board, that's okay because another trick my mom taught me when I was younger was on a nice sunny day, do the same thing. Put your sketch underneath your paper hold it up to the window and trace it. So the key is to make sure you tape so that the sketch doesn't move. And that's basically what I'm doing here in this for this tutorial. This part of the tutorial is to show you how it works. So thank you for watching. I will be starting the painting when we come back.